Let's give it up for our next headlight tour. Uh, I am thrilled to be here today to share stage with all of these beautiful people and to have you all to here today to listen all of these insights. By the way, my current organization is Airbus Alton India, I think uh, they have missed. But today we are going to talk about something very interesting. This topic lies at the intersection of the cutting edge technology and human centered design. Okay, so today we are going to talk about a lot of different things, but let me give you a little glimpse of what you can expect from this talk today. So today we are going to discuss about aviation, about data, and about design, undoubtedly. Okay, so by the end of this talk, I just hope that I might be able to generate some curiosity among you all in aviation and in design. So I did not get the presenter uh, thing, yes. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, uh, moving on. So today I will start my talk with the most basic question, okay? What is the most exciting thing for you? Okay, with, this is a very basic question. Now some will say studies, marriage, job, children, or life-altering activities, you know. But some might say traveling to different places. Some wanderlust like me. Do you guys agree? Give me a cheer. Awesome. So let's say, today we are going to start this talk with a very interesting thing. I want you guys to travel with me to the virtual trip to Bali, Indonesia. Okay, so let's, uh, let me tell you that what is the first thing that you do once you get to know that you want to visit to Bali. So as, uh, as like me from the family which I come, I have to ask my father. <laughs> okay, then I have to check my bank balance. I have to set the budget for the trip. And then I also have to plan the dates because I again have to apply for the leaves and I have to ask my manager. And after all these prerequisites have been done, I will go to some website and then I will try to book the flight tickets. And I will book it where the, wherever the flight tickets are cheap. Correct, this is the ideal journey. Do you guys agree with me? Awesome. After that, let's say you have visited the Bali and you have been to all of these beautiful destinations. And once you come back, your friends might ask how has been the trip for you? So you might say that the Bali was good, you watched sunset, you ate good food, then you traveled to some beautiful places, did water sports and things like that. But on the other hand, you might say that your trip was okay because you know, the weather was gloomy, it was raining whole day, you could not get to the, some of the touristy places because it was way too crowded or way too pricey and your connecting flights got delayed and something like that. So the experience between digital product and your physical experience might vary and we cannot control that. Do you guys agree with me? Yes. But we can prevent this by forecasting the events. That means we can predict these things with data, by studying the data. Okay, so now as designers, we are continuously trying to have and trying to building the relationship with, uh, with the data to understand what data can do and what it cannot do. Okay, we are trying to build that severely. Now going back to the roots, as I said, today we are going to discuss about three things, which is aviation, data, and then design. Okay, so now let's go to the aviation. So some of might, you are not from the aviation background, and you might not have idea on what products we are trying to build. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about these things. So in aviation, we have come back from a very long way, from the very first flight that the Wright brothers have built, to the largest fleet flying today, Airbus A380. 
we have come a long way and not just that even the flying experience for pilot have also been evolved tremendously including now voice enabled ui during the most critical situations as well we have come a long way guys and if we talk about the end user experience like all of us to have the premium economy option to have more of the comfort for the user to travel in the long haul flights we have come a long way in personalization and it is just not limited up to entertainment or food options but now we have also uh, vistara have, Vista have recently announced to be the world's uh, india's first airline to have free wifi in some of their selected international flights so what of all these things is giving the hints today that we as designers have to make ourselves evolve and have to have the conversation with data when i say data it just not uh, is limited to just the conventional data but with also ai but today i am not going to talk about ai much because you have already uh, there are a lot of beautiful speakers and more smarter people have already uh, talked about that so today before we proceed further i am also going to talk about on what kind of products that we are trying to build okay so in aviation there are certain kind of user groups that are involved i have already spoken on uh, the physical design the evolution of physical design the operations the flying experience the end user experience but today i am going to talk about the very niche product lines and to understand that we need to understand the user group first and these user groups are the very important people in the aviation business and these are airlines and owner of the aircraft now they are the top notch decision maker in this business because with their decisions all of these verticals that we spoke about is going to affect a lot they are going to make impact in all of these verticals so after the user group is defined after we have understood that what kind of products that we are trying to build it is also important for us to define the data because data as you know it is in a lot huge chunks there are tons of data from the manufacturing of the aircraft till it goes to uh, in vain so this criticality of data defines when our user comes with their morning coffee to our product are they able to make their decisions faster are they able to solve their problems faster even before it happens now it is just not limited once we have tried to understand the data we have interpreted the data it is important for us to choose the right representation of data which is equally important because that's where i think our product designer role intervenes and it makes a lot more impact now choosing the right representation is just not about uh, stating some numbers or graphs or charts it's just not limited up to it because in this era which is we are trying to have conversation with data so that our designs our data representation should also speak stories and define narratives so if we see that large excel sheet with lot of data does not make any sense and then we are also not limited by just being aesthetically by just making aesthetically appealing dashboards with beautiful widgets i mean it is necessary but are even is it even useful so that we as designer have to intervene and make some unconventional design decisions so that it can make a huge impact now as i said there are different ways that you can choose your representations right it could be numbers charts graphs or it could be something like this this is a bubble chart example i have taken it is a bubble chart of the product that that acquires different metrics finances ticket booking and customer satisfaction and it will give you birds eye view of what your users are doing with your product because as a designers we are trying to understand what our users are we are not trying to understand the numbers but we are trying to listen to real people 
and this is the interaction map. This is also an example I have taken. Uh, this interaction map will tell you on where our user journey is breaking, where our users are dropping off during our whole journey of the product. This will give you insights on how we can make our product experience better. And not just that, these are some of the examples, data visualization example that I have taken from the internet, from a uh, very renowned uh, data representation artist, I would say, uh, Gabriel or Mona Chalabi. And they, have, they are doing marvelous works, and I think you can take inspiration from them. Now, as I said, today we are going to have some fun session, okay? So let's go back again to our virtual trip to Bali. Now, we as designers, we are very good with observations. Do you guys agree? Give me a cheer. Awesome. So you do agree we are great observers. So you just have to imagine yourself, you are traveling from Bangalore to Bali in an aircraft and you have to observe people around you who are sitting next to you. Okay. So let's say out of 30 people, some will be using laptop or gadget, some will be awkwardly sitting, some would be extra excited or chubby. I don't know, is it just me? But even if it's a 3 a.m. flight, there are these people who are undoubtedly very excited. And there will always be one person who will always be angry with airline crew. I don't know for what reason, but I always, you know, uh, have experience with these kind of people. And not just them, some like me, I mean, most of the time I just doze off in the airplane until it land. It gives me this. I know this is ugly looking. This is my niece's drawing that I converted it to Figma, but pardon me for that. <laughs> so, um, as I said, we designers are great at observation. So there are two things, two things which is missing, which is something wrong here. You need to identify what is it. Can someone from the audience say it? Okay, I think to just to save my time before the buzzer buzz off, I would say, uh, the 30% passengers I have written, it is actually 25 passengers. Graph it is there. Uh, so this is it. But this is a square graph. What I'm trying to say here is we as designers have this superpower, you know. We are just not limited to screens nowadays. We are just not limited to some of the dimensions that we used to follow earlier. But we have a lot, huge canvas than ever before. And I think it is our ethical responsibility to use data in a way that will make our lives easy and our users' life easy. So as I said, data is just not a bunch of numbers. They are real human stories. And we as designers have to listen to it. Now it also tells us what, as I said in, my, uh, in, uh, in the previous slides as well, like data is just not about numbers. And we are also trying to build boundaries with data, okay? Not everything AI or data can do. And I think uh, Sarah very truly mentioned in her, in her talk as well, like AI cannot do everything, okay? There we designers came. So it, it tells us the gaps which is there in our product, in our designs, and it will give us the room to innovate. So I will take an example very quickly of Iceland country. They were facing a, a huge economic, uh, you know, shift because there were very less people traveling to the country. And due to that, they announced and introduced a very amazing innovative solution called Stop Over Buddy program. And in this program, the airline staff will, you know, show you the Iceland as their, as, as your personal tourist guide and you can visit the country and have the stay till seven days and you can visit it. So, is this just about innovation, just about fun? I don't think so. So, in 2016, when they introduced the program, the website bookings of Iceland Air Airlines went by 30%. And that, my friends, is a very huge number when you see a small country doing such a marvelous things. And if I see you, uh, if, if I let you see the data, all of the flights that have booked via Iceland was very huge during the summer time because at that time, definitely the, uh, the country looks very pretty. 
Now as designers, I said it is our, it is our responsibility, it is our ethical responsibility to involve users directly into our product before we launch, before we, uh, we are just doing the data research, we are interpreting the data, we are making the use of data and converting into uh, beautiful products. It is also important for us to test with the real users in real-time environment. So in aviation, uh, there are two examples. In A350 cockpit, uh, I think pilots were having, once uh, this was launched, the pilots were having little, um, you know, during the landing, they were having cognitive load and they get very overwhelmed, uh, overwhelmed during those critical moments. And I think they redefined the cockpit design again, which ensured safe landings and controlled information channel. And not just that, as I said, when we say we are using data to innovate, we are also giving data a chance to let us give the feedback, okay? And during that feedback loop, in uh, Boeing 787 Dreamliner, I think there was a problem where customer asked like they were feeling most uh, lethargy during the long haul flights. And then they adjusted the cabin pressure to maintain the humidity and I think they got beautiful feedback after that, which is less jet lag, increased passenger comfort. So that means that data helps us listen, as I said, not just numbers, but to real people's needs. Now, sometimes data also tells us to rethink, you know, okay, if we have made the decisions in our right, right way or not, are we going in the right direction or not? So I think we need to understand as designers what our responsibility is and it is very huge nowadays. As I said, uh, people are, uh, you know, celebrating like AI is there, our responsibility is come. I think when AI is there, our responsibility increases, our ethical responsibility increases. So, as I said, data will also help us as a designer, like our friend, by asking right questions. Now I will say, now I'll, I'll ask all of you, how do we ensure that the Bali experience, we, how we can make it better so that the maybe part of having a rough trip to Bali does not happen? I would say by studying the data. As simple as that. As a, as a normal user, as a travel enthusiast, I will go to the, go to, the Google and research about the place, about the touristy places, about the activities, about best time to visit, and so on to understand and make most out of my trip. So what we learned today, we learned how do we interpret with data, how do we tell stories through data, how are we making our decisions faster for our customers, so that they don't feel any issues going forward. And we had some cool examples and had fun. And I think last point, I think we all agree, right? So I think these are some of the credits that I want to mention uh, on some of the white paper, some of my friends that have always been there. And I think, yeah, that's me. Thank you so much.